to hold in my hand an action figure that contains such power to know that if I put it on eBay, it will probably get a bloody fortune. Welcome back to Doctor Who Classic Series Action Figures A History. In today's episode, we delve into the wonderful world of 2011 as I continue my look at the Forbidden Planet exclusive Classic Series Action Figure releases. 2011 sees the series up a notch as we get to see even more Forbidden Planet exclusive collector sets at a slightly more expensive price tag, as we get to see the debut of the classic series Sontarans within the line, packaged alongside rather excitingly a Sontaran pod travel ship, two different variations of that. And of course not to mention the release of the Davros collector sets, featuring not one, not two, but four different variations of Davros throughout the vast majority of his appearances within classic series Doctor Who, including Michael Wisher, David Goodison and Terry Malloy in Genesis, Destiny, Resurrection and Revelation of the Daleks. The vast majority of these collector sets back in the day fetched a recommended retail of £35, and I think that all the collector sets I will be featuring throughout this review have since gone on to in fact cost quite a lot if you decided to sell them on as a collector. Thinking back to 2011 as a collector, I was only 11 years old, and I quite frankly could not afford to pay £35 each and every month for Forbidden Planet exclusive collector sets. Since then, I have managed to go back and fill in a few of the gaps including the Time Warrior collector set and I don't in fact have the Genesis or Revelation of the Daleks collector sets. However I did manage to pick up the Sixth Doctor wearing his Revelation Necros robe as well as the variant of Davros from that collector set, arguably the most exciting figures of the collector set. However I still do not have the smaller variants released as a part of those sets. However thankfully due to the internet and the rather kind people as a part of the fandom with the action figures that I do not have as a part of my collection, Batman March, also known as Matthew Toffolo, will be stepping in to take a look at some of the collector sets that I don't have as a part of my collection. Also, a massive thank you to Macaulay Carnes, who has also provided photos of some of the action figure collector sets that I do not own, allowing me to narrate over the top of them, so this series can continue to take a look at each and every action figure released as a part of the series. So, without further ado, let's take a look at this very, very expensive year for classic series action figure collecting. After what seemed to be a rather large success with the Remembrance of the Daleks 4-pack in late 2010, 2011 seen a series of 4-packs being released for £34.99. This is the first of four of them in the Davros collector sets, featuring the Resurrection version of Davros alongside the Fifth Doctor and two Daleks from the 1980s story Resurrection of the Daleks. Now, of course, this formula will be followed throughout the year, including a Davros variant, a Doctor variant, and two Daleks from that story, something of which that I got two of the sets of fully. However, it got to this point in the series where Forbidden Planet were in fact releasing exclusive sets rather rapidly. So starting off with the fifth Doctor of the set, of course, another fifth Doctor variant in the line, and something of which that we've seen quite a lot of so far this series. However, for those of you that have been watching this series since the very beginning, you will recall the release of the Sixth Doctor regenerated from the Caves of Androzani in one of the very early episodes of this series. And finally, in the Resurrection of the Daleks set, we got to see the Fifth Doctor variation of that figure, including the paint apps of the Season 21 variation of Fifth Doctor costume. So taking a closer look at this, as per usual, the sculpt is exactly the same to the original Fifth Doctor figure. So we have the shirt, however, this time round it has been given a green highlight under the collar sections to reflect that of the late era version of Fifth Doctor. We also have the inclusion of the celery sculpt, which is now pretty much a normal feature of Fifth Doctor figures after it originally not being included on the first Fifth Doctor figure. The cricket jumper is exactly the same sculpt to the original version, however has seen the upgraded band additions, including a thick black and red line, which is a lot more prominent compared to the original Fifth Doctor figure. The coat itself is also exactly the same colour pretty much, including the red banding highlight, and that does of course also stretch around to the back, including some further details of pockets and a stitching line. 
Moving down to the trousers, these are now also exactly the same paint taps to that of the case of Andrew Rosani's Sixth Doctor Regenerated. However, this time round, a much more clean version, including the salmon pink and of course the black and white pinstripe that looks rather nice and is possibly my favourite variation of Fifth Doctor trouser. We also have the inclusion of the shoes or plimsolls. This time round, they've been painted a bright white and don't have any dirty defects on whatsoever. And that does of course go for the rest of the figure, which on the case of Andrew Rosani version of Sixth Doctor did of course have mud splatters everywhere down the left hand side. The main figure of the set that everybody did of course want is Davros as portrayed by Terry Malloy throughout the entirety of the 80s era of Doctor Who who did then go on to play Davros on many different occasions on Big Finish and he's done a rather brilliant job. He's certainly my personal favourite Davros of all time and it is lovely to have his representation in action figure form. So even though Davros uses the bottom half of a Dalek, the sculpt of this is entirely different. They haven't just used the sculpt of a regular Dalek because that'll be too big. So we start off at the very bottom where we have the fender, which is much more angular and has several different slats that wouldn't normally be there compared to that of a normal general drone Dalek. We have course, a series of panels stretching around to the side as well. As for the actual skirt, once again, this is a very similar idea to that of a regular Dalek. However, at this time around, the hemispheres have been sculpted a much smaller shape as opposed to the larger shape of a regular Dalek from the classic series. As you can see here, these are in fact a lot larger. These have been painted a silver colour, which I must admit for the scale there is a little bit of paint leak as you can see where it does go on to the black background, which is a little bit of a shame. Moving to the side, we do also have the inclusion of this panel, which is also featured on every Davros figure, even though it is in fact only relevant for resurrection of the Daleks. So basically this is a push panel feature where if you push it and then take it off, it does of course reveal a series of different circuits and panels on the inside of Davros's chair when he gets work received to his chariot within the actual story. It's moving further up the figure, we do of course have the inclusion of the control panel and then we move to the humanoid part of Davros. The control panel on Davros's chariot is in fact littered with many different small details including several screens as well as a few switches and of course those iconic little green levers that he does have throughout the 80s. And the panelling sculpt on each Davros figure would be dependent on what era it came from. So for example the Destiny and Genesis version of Davros are in fact an entirely different control panel altogether. Taking a look at the back of the chariot we do also have a few inclusions of lights in a way with a few clear plastic sections which is a nice touch we don't really see too much of that within the actual series and the back of Davros's chair includes this harness section which is a little bit of a warped piece of plastic painted silver which is a little bit of a shame especially considering when you tip the figure around to the front as you can see here the left hand side of mine doesn't really stay in place. As for the top half of the figure of course Davros's hand is sculpted to be able to control the different buttons on his panel and then we also have the main body section which has just been represented by a black piece of plastic. And then we move to the sculpt of the face, which I think is in fact incredible. It certainly looks like the Terry Malloy variation of face mask that we did see throughout Resurrection and Revelation of the Daleks and into Remembrance of the Daleks as well. Some different creases around the sides of the face and the wrinkles have been really nicely emphasised by a wash that has been added over the top. We have the eye sockets as well submerged back into the face, once again emphasised by a slightly darker paint app, which the same can be said also for the mouth section. Of course the majority of the face is shrouded in these wires and these different head sections as well. We have once again this harness keeping the head in place along with the neck brace at the side. Due to this being a 5.5 action figure of course these areas of the figure do look a little bit too big especially the silver around this section here and the rather large red and orange wires. However this can't really be helped and of course around the opposite side we do also have the inclusion of Davros's microphone out of a small piece of thin silver plastic. And after the excitement of a brand new sculpt added to the line, we now return back to normality with another Dalek variant, this time round the Supreme Dalek as seen throughout the story, which is a rather eye-catching variant and doesn't really look like any of the other Daleks released so far as a part of the series. So the main body of the Dalek is of course painted entirely in a glossy black and the hemispheres are a very vibrant white. Unfortunately, due to this figure being black, some of the paint leaks do stand out a little bit more than usual. Moving up to the middle section we have the mesh repeated once again painted rather nicely with a silver paint app and then we move to the top of the figure which is once again painted in a glossy black. 
Presumably after the success of the Remembrance of the Dalek set and slightly adjusting the size of the eye stock to reflect the Dalek seen as within that era, character options decided to do it again, this time round of the Resurrection Daleks, including a rather different design. So you have this rather staggered disc section, and then as per usual we have the black socket section, along with the pupil included at the end of the eye stock. The Daleks within this set also debuted a brand new sculpt of Eobulb that we will be seeing a lot more of throughout the future releases. This time around, pretty much exactly the same shape to the other Daleks that we've seen before. However, with a ridged, staggered design once again to highlight that of the cone shape seen within the 80s Dalek bulbs, which is a rather nice touch. Final figure of the set is another Renegade Dalek that obviously previous version was seen within the Remembrance of the Dalek set, however is quite a different colour scheme to this one, but is still the same basic idea, using darker greys and sort of a greyish blue paint app in a way to replicate the much darker design, which is of course a striking comparison compared to that of the white and gold Daleks that do of course follow Davros. Much like the Supreme Dalek, the fender on this figure is just your one solid sculpt as opposed to being divided into two, and the majority of the Dalek body has been painted in this greyish blue colour. The hemispheres are black and the weaponry section has also been painted as solid black. We have the inclusion of the mesh slat design once again, and of course the barrel section is painted in your usual manner. At the very top you have the dome, also a greyish blue, along with the inclusion of the brand new sculpt eye stalk, as well as the brand new sculpt ear section. Overall, the resurrection of the Dalek set was certainly a solid start to the rest of the Davros 4 packs to come in the future. However, some of the themes as previously seen on the Remembrance of the Dalek set are also once again continuing, featuring quite a few paint leaks here and there, and a few quality control issues, which this period within the Classic Series line did seem to have quite a lot of. The second Forbidden Planet exclusive set of 2011 is another rather unusual one, and I think that even still to this day, it's quite a surprise that we actually have a Sontaran spaceship pod in our collection, let alone two variants of exactly the same product. So here we have another Fourth Doctor set, this time around once again from Season 12, and it is of course the Sontaran Experiment featuring a Sontaran pod, Field Major Steyr, and another Season 12 variation of the Fourth Doctor, this time around wearing his duffel coat. Even though this figure set only includes three figures, they kind of count the Sontaran pod as the equivalent of two, therefore this set was once again £34.99. The fourth Doctor in duffel coat figure is in fact one brand new sculpt, as we do have a brand new coat over what would have been the original Wave 1 Season 12 costume. This figure would see a number of re-releases over the years as a part of the Toys R Us 50th Anniversary Collector sets, including the hatted and solemn head, as well as in the Genesis of the Dalek set with no hat slightly later on in 2011. The paint application on this fourth Doctor figure is a little bit unusual to say the least. To start off with, the likeness is exactly the same sculpt from what we've seen before. However, the paint application of the top makes it look like he has been dead a couple of years and they've kind of redug up his corpse and we have this as a result. A rather starey, dead looking Tom Baker with bright purple lips and very piercing looking eyes. So if you can look by that, then it is an okay figure. However, just looks a little bit worried about something. As for the actual costume itself, of course this uses the usual Season 12 Fourth Doctor scarf seen on a lot of the Fourth Doctor releases, and underneath we do get the suggestion of the Season 12 costume, this time rather unusually painted with a brown scarf, which I do believe is in fact inaccurate, this is meant to be the mint green of the Wave 1 figure, however they have decided to change this for some weird reason, and then we have the duffel coat over the top, which was of course also used on the recently released B&M 2019 Harry Sullivan figure. Also have further detailing on the backs, such as the rest of the panelling on the duffel coat itself, including the shoulder pads, and of course this divide in the very middle, and other than that it is in fact quite a nice sculpt and a nice variant of Fourth Doctor costume. As for the bottom of the Fourth Doctor figure, the legs are just exactly the same to the original Wave 1 release.
Next up we have Field Major Steyr, of course the first ever Classic Series Sontaran to make it within action figure form. The majority of Classic Series Sontarans use exactly the same body sculpt, however just have a few adjustments in its design here and there to make it look like a specific Sontaran from a specific era story. Steyr was re-released as a part of the B&M exclusive 2019 range, however did see a series of different pin tap changes and to be honest I think that the original is far superior. Yeah. Starting off with the likeness, they've certainly done a very good job on this in a very similar manner to Davros. They've certainly captured the look of the mask rather well. We have the eyes set back into the face and I really love the additional detailing of even the teeth in between the lips of the mouth. As for the actual costume, it's a nice basic colour of black and the detailing on this is rather superb, certainly capturing that of the material as used on the actual costume. The waist of the figure does of course include the communicator that is used throughout the actual story that would see a number of different paint taps over the years and of course the legs and the arms once again continue exactly the same material design along with the boot set at the very bottom which due to this being Steyr is in fact the armoured variation of boot including the cone design there as you can see on the back of the heel. The figure does also come with the rather unusual gun looking accessory with the ping pong ball at the very end and some rather nice and sharp pin taps. The figure does of course also come with the Sontaran helmet which this time round is just sculpted in a black plastic and does have the detailing of the eye holes as well as the small riveted section at the very top and as per usual much like all Sontaran figures the figure can of course be paused with this either on or off. And the third and final figure of the set, well I suppose it's more of a vehicle than a figure really, it is of course the Sontaran Pod. Now this is just a one basic rotor cast design so it is hollow on the inside and the major difference for this figure as opposed to the Time Warrior version of Sontaran Pod is of course the detailing on the door. This time round it has been painted and green with of course this yellow hexagonal design at the very middle. However sadly we do also have this printing at the very bottom here, rather prominent black colour which certainly stands out quite a lot on the green backdrop which is a little bit of a shame. On the inside we do have the portaloo design as you can see where the Sontaran would sit within the TV show and we do also have the suggestion of the control panel on the inside. It's not necessarily the best of interiors to say the least however it kind of works in a way. Of course that does close to reveal the rest of the pod itself which is just one big massive golf ball with a series of ridges and things around the side even this little circular section in the very middle at the top and at the very bottom we do have a little bit of creative license this was never seen within the actual story but we have the inclusion of a few thrusters as well as a few wires of course at the base of the ship itself and of course to finish it off we do have a few paint taps to make it slightly more interesting which is of course this rather unusual mud splattered design seen on the bottom half of the ship which of course the time warrior version would see a lot more of. One of the rather unusual things about the Sontaran Experiment set, which also applies to the Time Warrior set, is that due to it including the Doctor and an enemy, and that of course the main vehicle that the enemy uses being a spaceship, this set did have an unusual, more play value aspect to it, as opposed to the regular Forbidden Planet exclusive collector sets, and no doubt probably attracted quite a few newer and younger viewers to the Classic Series line. We're travelling back to April 2011 when the revelation of the Dalek set first came out. At least, that's what my YouTube channel tells me. The set consists of a re-release of the Sixth Doctor, which at the time was a highly sought after figure because it was tricky to get hold of in its Wave 1 release. Here it comes packaged without the Sonic Lance, but with the rather lovely Cloak of Mourning. Alongside the Doctor we have a tweak of the Terry Malloy version of Davros, a figure that had been released two months prior to this set, and we have both a Necros and Renegade Dalek, which were both new repaints in the line. The inclusion of the Doctor's Morning Cloak is a welcome addition to the set, moulded in a blue PVC with a lighter blue painted on the inside, and the sculpted details of the trim and question marks picked out in gold. The cloak sits loosely over the Doctor's shoulders, with just enough material around the neck so that it doesn't fall off. Moving to Davros, this figure had been previously released in the Resurrection of the Daleks set in February of the same year. The chair is the same, with a few tweaks to the decals on this console, and being the same chair, it retains the rather fun removable panel feature, operated by pressing this hemisphere. Not only does it allow access to Davros's inner workings, but it's also an excellent way for Davros to incapacitate his enemies by smashing them in the shins. The other change is Davros's microphone is now on the opposite side of his head, just like in the episode. Fair play to character for making sure that that was retained because they could have quite easily not bothered for such a small detail. 
Sadly, like with basically all of the classic Davros figures, the backrest part of his chair is rather warped, which is a shame. Another new and fun feature is Davros's interchangeable hand. Yes, you can reenact the moment Davros's hand gets blown off and wrapped around with bandages. The sculpt for this bloody stump works very well, and the green carled blood makes it all the more gruesome. This is my preferred way to display this figure, just to set it further apart from the resurrection version. Finally, we have our two Daleks, both sharing the same sculpt, much to the anger of Dalek aficionados, and the white and gold Dalek uses the Shawcraft style Dalek skirt rather than the taller skirt used by this type of Dalek. Why? Well, it all came down to money and trying to be as cost effective as possible to reuse parts. It's not a massive issue for me, but I think we would all like to see a new, more accurate sculpt one day. The Dalek is a brilliant pure white as per the episode, not like the ivory of the Imperial Daleks in Remembrance, and features gold hemispheres and gold on the mesh, which really brings out the sculpt around the shoulder slats. Both gun and plunger are gold, with the sucker part of the plunger being black, and the eye stalk is entirely white, save for the eye with the pupil on it. The dome lights are sculpted with a rib texture to better match the Mini Cooper indicator lights used on the real props, complete with black around the base. Then along the bottom, we have the two fender in white and a glossy black, just like the real thing. The Renegade Dalek is much the same, but features a darker bluish grey than seen on the Resurrection version. This was a really strong release. At the time, I think there was some slight disappointment because a Terry Malloy Davros had just been released a couple of months before, so it felt like something quite similar too soon. In fact, there was a general feeling of Davros fatigue that year, regardless of how much people wanted classic Davros figures in their collection. The Sixth Doctor and the Necros Dalek were welcome additions, and the standard Renegade Dalek was great for army building. The Necros Dalek would see a couple of re-releases in the coming years, with some tweaks to the sculpt. But that's a story for another time. It was April 2011. The revelation of the Dalek set had just arrived, and the following week, the genesis of the Dalek set turned up. 2011 was definitely the year of Davros. The set features a new version of Davros, this time it's the original Michael Wisher version, that is a tweak of the same sculpt used on the previous Molloy Davros figures. Alongside it are two Daleks, tweaks of the figures that were first released in the Dalek Collector Set 1. And then we have the fourth Doctor in Duffelcoat. More on him later. Let's begin with Davros. As stated, he has the same sculpt as the Molloy version with regards to everything below the neck. This means that he still has the rather fun removable panel in the side of his chair. There are additional tweaks, in particular the buttons on the consoles match the ones used on the actual chair, right down to the translucent coloured toggle switches, which is just brilliant, as well as all of the transparent parts along the back. Again, like all of the classic Davros figures, he suffers from warped chair syndrome on the back, which, no matter how many times I've heated it up with a hairdryer or boiling water, I cannot get it to straighten out. It might be a minor annoyance to some, but it always bugs me, especially on this figure. The head sculpt is an excellent recreation of John Friedlander's iconic mask. My only alteration would have been to add a bit more of a dark wash to the face to really help that sculpt pop, because it's so good. Overall, it's a great figure, and was one of the most sought-after characters in the line at the time. This wouldn't be the last time we saw this figure, as a repaint was set to come out the following month in another Davros-centric set. Davros, you wait years for one, and then four versions arrive in the space of four months. Next we have the Daleks. Both are pretty much the same on first glance, and as such would seem to be the same as the original Collector Set 1 release. However, there are a few notable changes that make them more accurate to their on-screen counterparts. We have the addition of the ribbed Mini Cooper indicator lights, and both have the two-part fender, unlike the original that had the one-piece fender used in Day of the Daleks. Also, gone is the silver circle in the middle of the sucker. So the Dalek with the bronzish gun is basically an update to the version seen in that first collector set. It's the same Dalek that Davros shows off to the Khaled scientists at the start of part two. The second Dalek is a variant that features a new silver gun, and the ball attachments in the sockets are the same grey as the rest of the Dalek, as is the top fender pieces, while the bottom remains black to emulate what would have been the strip of black rubber. Then we have the duffel coat fourth Doctor, which features the hatless sculpt and a new coat on top of the previous torso piece. This is a great addition until you realise that the cardigan and necktie have been repainted to look like the waistcoat and cravat from the following season. Why did they do this? Why did they do this the next two times when they released this figure again? I have no idea, but it still keeps me awake at night. As an extra bonus, we get this rather cool Dalek mutant from the incubator room made of translucent plastic and moulded in such a way that it can be wrapped around the Doctor's neck and held onto as if he's grappling with it. So you can recreate that great cliffhanger at the end of part 5. 
This is another strong release from one of Doctor Who's most popular stories, providing a great opportunity to army build and get a chance to own one of Doctor Who's most popular villains in his original form. Fourth and final set from the Forbidden Planet exclusive Davros 4 packs is that of another Fourth Doctor story, this time round later on in his era with Destiny of the Daleks, once again featuring two Dalek variations, a variant of the Fourth Doctor, in fact a brand new variation from the City of Death and Destiny of the Daleks, along with another variant of Davros, this time round the David Goodison portrayal as seen throughout the story, once again featuring some brand new paint apps. A few months after the release of this set, there was a second version released featuring exactly the same contents with figures identical to the original version. However, this time round it came with a little card that was in fact a signature from David Goodison himself. Changing things up a bit and taking a look at the two Dalek variations of the set first. Of course, these are Daleks from Destiny of the Daleks, therefore they are a lighter grey, along with a few black highlights. Now, as you can see between the two of them, there are a few alterations, much like how I do believe there was throughout the story, because I think that it is fair to say that these Daleks were fairly battered props by this point within Doctor Who history. Of course, if you have been watching this series since the very beginning, I do believe in episode two it would have been. I covered the fourth Doctor adventure set, including another Dalek from Destiny of the Daleks. However, this time round with the bombs around the midsection. Of course, the paint application on that Dalek is in fact very similar to the Dalek here. So we have the black slats once again. However, this time round, the overall paint application on the original version was much more of a matte black colour. This one seems to be a little bit more glossy. I think that all of these Daleks do in fact look very cool together in almost a fleet or squad ready to go out exterminating the different Mavellans that we see on the surface of Scarrow throughout the story. I think the design of them stands out quite a lot, especially because it is a lighter grey, and if you have the fourth Doctor adventure set from the early days of the line, the suicide Dalek within the very middle certainly makes these Daleks stand out even further. Drone Dalek 1 features the two section slat design featuring a black panel at the bottom followed by the usual grey and of course the skirt itself as well as the rest of the Dalek has been painted in the lighter grey design including the glossy black hemispheres. The main difference for this Dalek is within the mesh section as you can see the slats have been painted once again a lighter grey with a metally silver highlight spread throughout the mesh section. The weaponry is just of course a solid black. As for the actual barrel section once again the same discs to usual and of course your normal grey dome. Once again we have the inclusion of the resurrection of the Daleks ridged bulbs, however at this time round they have been given a much more whiter wash. At the very top of this we do also have the inclusion of the eye stock which has been given a slight greyish section along with these separated blue discs and of course the white pupil there at the very end as well which is a little bit thinner compared to that of the original fourth doctor adventure set Destiny of the Daleks Dalek. Second Dalek drawn of this set follows a much more traditional Dalek colour scheme, starting off with your fender at the bottom, this time round just a solid black. The skirt section is once again pretty much exactly the same with the black hemispheres and the main body being grey, however the midsection is where we see a few differences. Slats have been painted a glossy black with one silver highlight to replicate the mesh, and then we do also have this midpoint here also painted a black colour, which was absent on the first version from the set. Once again, the weaponry has been sculpted in a black plastic and from this point onwards the rest of the Dalek is basically exactly the same including the whitewash light bulbs. The fourth Doctor figure of the set is in fact a brand new body sculpt that we have never seen before. However, after the release of this set, we would later see this exactly the same body re-released once more as a part of the City of Death set. And that figure is far superior to this one. I think it is fair to say that the figure within this set is a little bit of a disappointment. To start off with, the actual scarf is the standard Wave 1 fourth Doctor scarf. And I just think that that is probably one of the main issues because to start with, I do believe the Fourth Doctor scarf did alter for this story, as was the later half of the Fourth Doctor era. And on the actual figure perspective of things, I think there's something about the Wave 1 scarf on this body that just looks a little bit odd anyway. It almost looks a bit out of proportion, especially when you have the head on top, which just makes it look like he's got a little bit of a giraffe neck. It seems very tall and very streamlined in all of the wrong ways. It just seems completely out of proportion. However, the costume sculpt itself is rather nice. 
much like the Sontaran Experiment variation of Fourth Doctor released earlier on in 2011, this version of the Fourth Doctor is once again looking not necessarily dead this time, but a little bit more satanically possessed, or by energy from another world which has taken on his mind and completely drowned out all of the colour within his eyes, because now we just have this white base design with a very small pinprick of colour to represent that of the pupil, and it just looks incredibly creepy and a little bit unsettling, as you can see he's looking off to the side in a very shifty manner. We do have the pink lips this time round, which look a little bit more alive compared to the previous version, and the hair is just your regular design and regular sculpt from the original Wave 1 Fourth Doctor, released of course many, many years ago. Moving further down the figure we have the inclusion of the wave one scarf which as i've already said i don't really like Taking off the scarf to give a better look at the costume, I think that this really emphasises what I said earlier about the fourth Doctor having a giraffe neck, because that is certainly present on this figure right here. It definitely was very out of proportion. However, on a more positive note, the costume itself is really nice, and I love the detail that has been included on this. So to start off with, I really love this highlight that has been given to the lapels, really emphasising those, and of course the darker colour just stretch around to the back as well. We also have the inclusion of the button sculpts and the button holes around the very sides which, along with the pocket sculpting as well which has also been given this black highlight which is a nice touch and then of course on the back we have the inclusion of the usual stitching lines and the two further buttons as well. In the very middle of the figure we do have this inclusion of a very baggy shirt section with of course the open collar along with the buttons going down the side and also towards the sides of this we get the suggestion of what looks like a waistcoat underneath you can just see the edges of it here. However, for this release, that has of course been unpainted. Sides of the arms will follow the same colour of the overcoat being a nice pea green, and we do also have some emphasis on the cuffs where we have the outline of the black design once again. Moving down to the trousers, it is a rather similar colour to every other Fourth Doctor figure really, being a light grey. Very much like how we did have throughout the story, the Fourth Doctor figure does include some rather large looking boots which have been given a nice brown pen tap, and we do also have some emphasis around the sides here of the rather large padding at the very top. Of course this will be absent on on the later edition of the City of Death variant of Fourth Doctor. The fourth and final figure of the set is of course Davros, this time round as portrayed by David Goodison. Now this figure does use exactly the same base as the genesis of the Daleks figure of Davros, of course the character as played in fact by Michael Wisher, however it does use exactly the same head sculpt because I do believe the head sculpt that was used within the actual story, or at least the mask, was also exactly the same and did look a little bit worse for wear throughout the actual story. This time round Davros has been packaged with this unusual orb, but for the minute we will take that away to take a look at Davros without his little control source device. Davros Chariot has in fact been given quite a large overhaul when it comes to paint taps. So as per usual, exactly the same sculpt. However, this time round we have a black paint tap on the fender as opposed to the silver of Genesis of the Daleks, but a silver brush stroke has been applied over the top of this to give a rather lovely looking weathered and battered design. Of course, a reference to Davros's hibernation since the events of Genesis of the Daleks. The rest of the wheelchair itself has rather unusually been given this rather light grey design, which I am pretty sure that within the actual story it may have been slightly grey, however not this grey. Of course remembering that in Genesis of the Daleks, after all, it was pretty much a solid black. However, the hemispheres do still remain your regular silver. Unfortunately, due to the use of the light grey, once again this does highlight a few of the paint leaks within the product itself, where we have a few scratches around the side here, as well as at the very front, which were present when I originally bought the figure. And as per usual, as to it using exactly the same sculpt to the original wheelchair, by pressing this button on the side, it does of course pop off the panel to reveal the circuitry underneath. This time round, the control panel that has been used on Davros's wheelchair is exactly the same to the one as used within Genesis of the Daleks, however has seen a few paint revisions compared to the Genesis version. So sliding that one on, as you can see, generally overall, it does look rather similar, so we still have the pink of the switches at one side, and the buttons in the very middle have also been painted a rather similar colour. However, on the Genesis version, as you can see, these levers towards the side are a much more translucent yellow. On the Destiny 
Davros, as you can see, these are a much more darker green. There's also a little panel under the arm once again that is the same with the black paint taps. And then, of course, tilting around to the very back where we have the translucent plastic sections. On the Destiny Davros, this is a fluorescent orange. And on the Genesis Davros, this is a yellow as per usual, Davros does once again feature his rather annoying sort of back piece which has been painted in your regular silver. However, much like all the other variations of Davros, this is a rather annoying and flexible design and looks rather warped on the figure itself. But comparing it to the other releases, both of these shoulder pad sections are in fact nicely sat on the body compared to the Genesis Davros, which is once again a lot more warped. Due to this being the Destiny variation of Davros, you can also pop the little control panel onto the chair itself to make the figure certainly look a lot different compared to the other four Davroses released throughout 2011. The head sculpt of Davros this time round uses the Michael Wisher design as seen on the Genesis of the Dalek set, however has seen a major paint revision. The skin tone overall is now much darker, much like how it was throughout the actual story, however the detailing does still remain, including some really lovely creases and wrinkles within the face emphasised by a darker wash paint app, and of course all of the wires on the head have also seen a slight revision. Now all of the cables around the sides of the face are a rather fluorescent orangey red colour, with the eye pupil piece still in the very middle, and the microphone has now been painted a black with a silver tip. Of course, bringing in the Genesis Davros to compare this, even though it does use exactly the same sculpt, it still looks strikingly different compared to this version. Taking a look at the back one, the inclusion of the neck brace, as well as, of course, the silver skull section, which is exactly the same sculpt to the original version, however, using a darker blue. And with the release of the Destiny of the Daleks action figure collector set, we now have all three actors who portray Davros throughout the classic series represented in action figure form, being Michael Wisher, David Goodison and Terry Malloy, three incredibly talented actors that all given their unique take on Davros, one of the best villains in Doctor Who's history. Next up, we see the release of the Time Monster Collector Set, once again a Forbidden Planet exclusive, and is possibly one of the most boring collector sets released in the history of the character options range. I never picked this product up back in the day, but with thanks to Macaulay Khan's providing images, it can still feature as a part of this series in all of its non-exciting glory. This set provides the further opportunity to pick up the Roger Delgado Master figure that was originally released within the Claws of Axos set, once again retaining his standard black suit. There is really nothing to talk about with this figure, as it is virtually exactly the same to the original release, with a possible ever so subtle change to the paint application on the face, however nothing too notable. He does, however, come packaged with a fragment of the Crystal of Kronos, sculpted in clear plastic with a black handle at the bottom, as well as the Doctor's Time Sensor Scanner, with two dials on the front, as well as a handle below, so the Third Doctor can hold it if you have one already as a part of your collection. Moving on to the other part of the set, we have the Master's TARDIS, disguised as a 70s computer bank. This is a rotorcast piece that is completely hollow in a typical 70s avocado green plastic, with some paint application at the front featuring grey and white panel highlights, as well as some computer bank dials in the very middle. If you've seen 1970s Doctor Who, you have no doubt seen this design throughout many classic Doctor Who serials. Due to this product being rather hollow, Overall, it does have a rather squishy feel, a little bit like a cheap dog toy, and overall is not that exciting. However, if you're a fan of Master Tardises, I suppose it will look decent on the shelf, with the future releases in the range, including the Grandfather Clock, and of course the Master Tardis as a column. Overall, this set is really nothing to rave about. The recommended retail was £20 back in the day, so thankfully it was slightly cheaper compared to the usual two packs as a part of the series. Halfway through 2011 seen the release of yet another Sontaran collector set, this time focused around the third Doctor story, The Time Warrior, of course the first ever episode within TV Doctor Who history to feature the Sontarans. This set does of course feature a third Doctor figure, the Sontaran known as Lynx, alongside another Sontaran pod. And I think that it was within this point within the classic series Doctor Who line that a lot of the collectors started to 
realise that they were focusing on particular areas within the classic series, collecting up different variations of Dalek, different costume variations of Cyberman earlier on in 2011, focusing on the different embodiments of Davros, and now we see another variation of Santaran, with of course more on the way to come later down the line. Now this set does of course follow exactly the same format to the Santaran experiment set, and therefore does feature quite a few re-release parts. This time starting off with the Santaran spaceship pod, of course this is exactly the same sculpt to the previously released Santaran experiment pod, and it does pretty much also look exactly the same. However, a noticeable difference is that the paint application is of course slightly different. This time round we have a very unusual mud splatter that has been applied to the bottom, much like the previous release. However, we have this mud design that has been spread up throughout the pod, including this band design that once again is very unusual. Usual. It doesn't particularly look too natural, and it looks like artificial weathering. Once again, at the very top, we do get the spherical design. However, a better look at the weathering as well. And of course, the most noticeable difference with this set is that once you open it up, the door has now been replaced with a burgundy design, as opposed to that of the green design seen on the previously released Sontar Experiment set. Personally, I do like the Sontar Experiment one more. It does look a little bit more eye-catching, because this one is just one solid colour. However, the benefit of it being a darker colour is that the coding at the very bottom is much less prominent compared to the original version. As per usual, we have the portaloo in the very middle, and other than that, there's not really too much to talk about. Back in the day, I think I was still recovering, to be quite honest, from buying all the previous sets from 2010 and earlier 2011, so I decided to miss out on this one, and in early 2019, I in fact found it on eBay and got it shipped from America for a fairly reasonable price. I too much more than the recommended retail. However, for the majority of fans, there's not really too much to be excited about. Next up, we have another variation of Third Doctor, this time round in his green blazer, as seen throughout the Time Warrior. Now, the design of this does look fairly similar to the one as seen throughout the Eleven Doctors set. However, upon actually inspecting the tomb, this one does have a number of differences. Sliding in the Carnival of Monsters variation of Third Doctor, it is in fact pretty much an entirely different green, and it's something of which, on first glance, you may not recognise. However, for the most part, the detailing does remain the same. And by the way, this is the Eleven Doctor set version, just with the cloak piece removed. I've just taken it off to make it easier for this comparison. So to start off with, the inner sections of the blazer have now been changed. On this version, it is the cravat and, of course, the mint green frill shirt. And on this one, it is the standard frill shirt however with the bow tie that has been painted in a darker colour and the white of the shirt itself is rather vibrant and different. The sculpt of the blazer itself is exactly the same as expected, the figure does come with a sonic screwdriver and the frills of the shirt are now white on this version and mint green on the original version to of course reflect the colour of this piece underneath. Moving down to the lower half of the costume we do also see a variation in leg so this time round on the Time Warrior version of course this is the standard trouser design with a Cossy black shoe, and on this version it is the greyish trousers with of course the glossier pen tap boot. However, the most noticeable difference on the Time Warrior version is that he has been coated completely up to the knee in this unusual mud design. And then, of course, moving back up to the top of the figure, this likeness to John Pertwee, actually the same sculpt to usual. However, the Eleven Doctors set version does in fact feature a slight wash to the hair as it's almost a little bit greyer, and on the Time Warrior version it stands out quite a lot. It is certainly a more vibrant white, the detailing is still there, however much more subtle compared to this wash version. And of course the actual paint application within the face, including the facial expression, is also a little bit different. This one does seem to be a little bit more prominent, and this one seems to use a few more thicker paint applications, making it look a little bit less sharp, however still very much like John Pertwee. And to be honest, it is a very nice variant. I do like this one. It's certainly grown on me a lot more having got it within my collection as opposed to just seeing it on a screen third figure of the set and the one that everybody is purchasing the set for is of course Lynx, the first ever Sontaran that we got to see within Doctor Who history and arguably the most iconic of all time. I think the performance of Lynx especially is one that stands out the most as being one of the best. And the main base of this figure is exactly the same to that of Steyr using exactly the same sculpt, however it does use a series of different paint changes. 
polish section on Lynx is now a much more darker grey as opposed to the standard matte black and of course the communicator itself has received a slight alteration within its paint taps. It does in fact look entirely different. However, this is exactly the same sculpt. However, just a panel has been added over the top to make it look like a different design. Moving down to the bottom half of the figure, it does pretty much once again look exactly the same sculpt. However, the upper thigh on Lynx has in fact been changed now to include a holster on the side in order to hold Lynx's weapon. Moving further down the figure, we do have once again the knee pads on Dyer. These are a standard black. However, on Lynx, these are a grey colour. And in fact, the boots on Steyr are much more padded, as you can see with some armour. However, on Lynx, these are in fact a standard Wellington style boot with a little bit of a silver sole there added at the very bottom with a number of different creases in. And due to this being a different sculpt, it does in fact make Lynx stand ever so slightly taller compared to that of Steyr. The hands on Lynx have also seen a brand new sculpt. As you can see, these are the much more normal three fingers as seen on a Sontaran and have been painted in Lynx's skin colour. However, on Steyr, these are in fact four fingers and a thumb, much like a regular human. Now, one of the main ways that you can differentiate between the different Sontaran characters is that they rather effectively re-sculpt the heads on each individual Sontaran, even if the body does remain the same, you have a completely different character head on top, and Lynx in particular is one of the best of the lot. It is an absolutely phenomenal sculpt, and as I previously mentioned, I did add this set to my collection in early 2019, and I did in fact review this set in a whole full review, therefore if you would like to find out more about this figure, check out that video where I pretty much compliment this sculpt for a solid several minutes. But yeah, it is a lovely design, some really lovely paint taps, lovely inclusion of the facial hair as well, and the really subtle designs of the lighter colours around the sides of the eyes, and even the emphasis on the bone structure. It is a brilliant sculpt and a brilliant paint application over the top. The gun of Steyr has now been replaced by this nice wand weapon which does have a few interesting paint apps including a silver band along the top and the bottom as well as a very slight golden paint app at the top at the very tip. This inclusion and once again this can be displayed either in the figure's hand or in the holster. In my opinion, the Time Warrior set is a little bit more superior compared to the Sontaran Experiment set. I really love the variant of the Third Doctor, of course the likeness on Lynx is superb, and the Sontaran pod I suppose is a nice touch, even if I do like the inside insert of the Sontaran Experiment one a little bit more. So there we go, the end of another episode. Has your wallet ran away yet? Mine certainly did, a long, long time ago. The conclusion of one of the most expensive periods within the classic series action figure line, however, generating some very exciting variants of multiple Davroses, some brilliant paint application on Daleks, some Sontaran pods, and of course the iconic characters of Lynx from the Time Warrior, and of course Field Major Steyr from the Fourth Doctor story, the Sontaran Experiment. Thank you once again to Matthew Matthew Toffolo, also known as Batman March, for stepping in and taking a look at the Genesis of the Daleks set and Revelation of the Daleks collector set, and also a massive thank you to Macaulay Carnes for providing photos of the Time Monster collector set featuring Roger Delgado as the master, and of course the TARDIS computer bank. Macaulay does in fact also help me out with the continuity of this series to make sure that I take a look at each of the action figure collector sets in the right time, to make sure that I'm doing everything in order, and making sure that I filmed it in the right order at least, so a massive thank you to him for that because it's not a very easy job to do and quite frankly this series has become a group effort over the many many months so I'm very grateful. I'm also grateful to you for watching along as well. So thank you very much for watching, I hope you have enjoyed it. Do of course stay tuned for more videos on the host productions every single week and of course a continuation of this series in the future. Bye for now.